In this video, we will be talking about four important topics that involve the latest research in sales management. First, we will discuss the effective selling contingency framework. Second, the shifts in organizational structure will be explained, highlighting what it was like in the past and how it looks like today. Third, we will be diving deeper into insight selling and going through a real-life implementation of the concept. Lastly, we will round up with sales psychology and how linguistics can be used to help sales situations. Let us begin our research with the Sales Effectiveness Contingency Framework developed by Barton A. Weitz. Withstanding the test of time, the idea of an effectiveness framework was put forth in 1981 by Weitz and is still widely sourced today. In his paper, he posits that there is no quote-unquote secret equation to sales success and that a number of factors can contribute to an effective sale, but not necessarily a closed deal. This framework was built out of the narrowly defined and inconclusive past research. Seen here, age, for example, was tested as significant by one researcher, while proved not significant by another, who used similar research techniques. Weitz thus came to the conclusion that understanding sales effectiveness came from unifying narrow past data and conducting subsequent lab and field testing to build a comprehensive hypothesis. In order to best understand his findings, let us go through each part of the framework. The first part deals with understanding the selling environment as well as the knowledge needed from the outset in order to influence the client. Part 2 deals with drawing upon one's own capabilities such as experience, empathy, and product-related intelligence. Part 3 covers awareness of the customer-salesperson relationship. This means understanding things like whether building substantial rapport is important and if this is a client you'd wish to work with again in the future. The last component is probing and discovering the customer's needs in order to deliver an appropriate solution. Weitz's findings reveal that there is no formula to guarantee a closed deal. Rather, an effective sales process encompasses the four components outlined here. Now let's talk about shifts in organizational structure. In the 80s and early 90s, selling was fairly simple. Consumers who were searching for business solutions looked for answers from suppliers. Because information was not widely available, there was nowhere else the business could find reliable sources. With customers knocking at the door, selling could be as easy as going through a framework. And in fact, that's what they did. Sales forces were programmed to abide by an optimal selling process. This limited their judgment and freedom as to what they can do and what they can't do. Today's consumers are a lot more informed than the past. By the time they approach suppliers, they will already have a general idea of the problem that needs to be solved, the options that are available, and the price range that they are willing to pay. Thus, the process-driven sales approach may not always work in today's day and age. Personal judgment and creativity then becomes a defining factor in which a sales rep is a star or an average. The key takeaway from this section is that process-driven sales approaches are not enough in today's competitive sales atmosphere. With consumers becoming more and more aware, there needs to be other incentives for them to buy into your product. Let's move on to insight selling. So what is insight selling? Insight selling is a sales strategy in which beneficial insights are given through a specific product or service to the consumer after analyzing certain aspects of their firm. These aspects include their problems and needs, how their buying process works, and knowing who the key decision makers are. In other words, salespeople are becoming educators in a sense, giving their clients new insights that they had never previously thought about. As mentioned in the previous section, due to change in consumer awareness, Process-based selling may not be enough to persuade consumers to buy into your product or service. Therefore, more and more companies are adopting the idea that besides a reliable framework, a salesperson's own judgment and insights are important as well. A successful example of insight selling is a global manufacturing firm that we shall call Alpha. Alpha creates selling teams that consist of three members, an account executive, a solutions design specialist, and a project implementation manager. These teams are accountable for their results, but not by the means they use. So the teams could use frameworks, but also any other means they feel is necessary to complete a sale. A sales manager is also available to give them guidance, but strictly on a peer-to-peer -peer level. Ultimately, after a year of implementation, Alpha has doubled in the average deal size and decreased the deal development costs by 40%. The key takeaway from this section is that insight selling has been proved to be more effective and efficient than process-driven approaches. Sales forces should be given the freedom to utilize their own judgment and creativity. If results are insufficient, 
guidance should be given instead of implementing strict rules and guidelines. Now, let's turn to our fourth item, sales psychology. In this section, we will talk about the psychology of sales, then delve into sales linguistics. It is worth noting that sales psychology is not a formal branch within psychology, and that ideas presented here are based more on observation rather than hard-hitting scientific data. This was due to the fact that heavily supported research is scant and not widely recognized by the academic community. Now, let us turn to sales linguistics. Steve W. Merton is the leading figure in this area of study. His work focuses on the use of verbal and nonverbal language in complex sales. Martin conducted a study to determine which sensory tools, from auditory, visual, or kinesthetic, would allow for the highest selling price as well as create the greatest customer comfort. Working with three groups, he subjected each to different selling conditions. As we see, the study participants or customers felt more comfortable when they could see and touch the product as well as receive a verbal description. However, once participants were able to touch the product, Martin found that they felt the verbal description embellished the product's value, and thus they distrusted the sales pitch, leading to lowest perceived value. Martin's conclusion from this study was that delivery matters and that a strong pitch works highly in favor of the salesperson. When conducting our primary research, we tested this conclusion and found that industry and product matter. Speaking to a salesperson that dealt with large appliance sales, visual and verbal were both the most practical and effective. However, something like software or a low-tech app benefited from a demo or kinesthetic engagement. With all content presented, let us take a moment to summarize our findings. Firstly, the four-part sales effectiveness framework. Next, the shift in organizational structure within sales and the value of exercising one's own judgment. Thirdly, insight sales and how the role of a salesperson is becoming more so of an educator. Finally, sales psychology and how different sensory tools resulted in more or less favorable outcomes. With that, we conclude. Thank you for listening. If some of the content jumped out at you and you'd like to learn more, refer to our description box for further resources.